Any secrets you have, just share it. There's no competition. Minimalism helped me hedge the bet when I made some transitions. I got half paid in CPK gift cards and I opened up the Amazon dashboard and it said for one month. That's crazy. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Mid Combo Podcast. We have another guest episode today. Super excited. Craig Adams. He is a filmmaker, hiker, minimalist. Come on. Kind of an interesting collection of just like titles. But you guys will find out in this episode, that's literally what he is. And we're going to dive into a lot of his story. He was like in the wedding industry, transitioned, did YouTube, did content creation, worked with brands, did client work. He kind of went on, did everything. There's just a lot of lessons to learn. Um, I'm excited for this one. The man does it all, but let's roll that intro music. Yo, Craig, mm. thanks for sitting down with us so we can uh, essentially pull as much as we can out of you for our audience. I um, just wanna first off say, it's been incredible following you on social media. It's been cool to see your journey with um, just all your travels. I think the first thing that I kinda wanna get into for the mid combo here is what the heck was it like from kind of going through that transition period of starting out being someone that's interested in shooting photo and video and now being in the position that you're at can you share a little bit about just that quick fast track yeah my work follows my interests my interests have changed over time <laughs> it was weddings for some reason yeah made good money started a youtube channel started teaching people yeah just my interests have changed and now i'm at hiking and outdoors so there's a lot in between there. I don't know exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I almost like see them as chapters, right? Dang. Like you had that chapter of Reinhardt, get money, I'm gonna shoot the weddings. Yeah. Uh, you, you touched on, you did education for a while. Yeah, that's YouTube. You know, the business of making videos on YouTube was a real eye opener with the weddings first. Yeah, you know, I'm like, oh, I could treat a YouTube channel as a business, make money, get brands, educate, make a product, a video product for this audience. You know, all of that was like starting with the weddings. And wow. now I don't do anything with weddings anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it like, seems me, like me... a waste of time, but like, seriously. Do not roll into Craig's inbox <laughs> asking to shoot a destination wedding. <laughs> There was a good slide off, you know, after I got rid of that chapter of my life, like mm -hmm. a couple people were like, do you still do weddings? Can you please do this wedding? And I was like, no, cold turkey. You, you did like, it was like a full, yeah. full cut off cold turkey. Like when you were transitioning out, you'd even do like one a summer or yeah. like no exceptions. Yeah, no exceptions. Wow. I don't recommend that. <laughs> it probably would have been smarter for me to keep the YouTube channel and to like maybe shoot occasional weddings. Like, I don't know. It was kind of silly for me to. So for some context, you had a very successful wedding, basically wedding education, like how to shoot weddings, YouTube channel. I, honestly, that's where I saw when I first met, uh, saw Craig and I learned a lot because I was trying to shoot weddings. How many years was ago was that? shoot i don't even know that's probably like be six or seven i don't know yeah Dang, six that's or day one yeah six or seven years ago um and then your interests were aligned because like i was following matt diavella heavily at the time and he was like going blowing up like minimalist stuff mm. but and that's where i saw another podcast that craig did and so it's kind of crazy full circle to have him on our podcast to have him here which is cool let's go back to the wedding film school transition How, what did that look like financially for you as a freelancer like Obviously, you're making a lot of money doing weddings. You have a YouTube channel that's generating income. Like, I think freelancing, like, money is a big part that people worry about. Like, how can they make it? How can they survive? And then when it's doing well, they're scared to transition because they're like, the money's so good. Mm -hmm. So what did that transition look like? Was it like, literally, that was cold turkey too, and you just had to figure it out? or Yeah, shooting for weddings, the brides, the couples would pay me checks and those numbers kept getting bigger and bigger. I was like, just happy to be making video and making money. And I didn't know what brand deals were. I had no idea with the YouTube side of business. This was kind of early-ish YouTube. Mm -hmm. And the Amazon affiliate, <laughs> my friend taught me that. I didn't know what it was. Started placing links to Amazon products, cameras, mics, whatever in the YouTube videos, people were clicking those. I'll never forget, I was like vacationing somewhere for a hot second and I opened up the Amazon dashboard and it said 6,000 for one month. And I was wow. like, that's like, that's 
crazy. Yo. Like if I just focus on that and stop doing everything else, like I could make a living. So I was like, whoa, okay. How do I make better, bigger videos? Wow, that's cool. I think uh, one part, one thing that kind of comes to mind is we talk about diversifying income on the podcast with being a freelancer, being a creative. It sounds like you've kind of ha you've tasted all of that from shooting weddings, being in person. Those are long days to, you know, kind of focusing more on like the product side to now the affiliate side, <laughs> back to like the wedding educational stuff that you pushed. Um, how did you even get into that or did it just like fall in your lap and you're like, well, I'm going to try this out because people keep asking me questions. Like, how did that come about? Yeah. It all happened because of one mentality share everything. Wow. Any secrets you have, just share it. There's no competition. Everyone can be a friend. You can help each other. There was this older, old school mentality with wedding filmmakers and photographers like, oh, that's like my secret. Don't like, I'm, if they do better, I'm going to like make less money. So I was young. I went in the opposite direction. I started building an audience and just went with that mentality of just share all my secrets. People kept asking me questions I'd answer the same question, like, what's the best way to mic up a bride over and over again? I'm like, I'm tired of always, you know, texting this out. Let me make a video and automate that process. You just keep doing that over and over again and just provide value automated online for people to access themselves. And, you know, it works. Wow. Programs, workshops, courses are huge right now. Hmm. Back when you launched that, there wasn't that many platforms, at least I knew about, that were supporting courses and workshops and programs like they are now. I actually have a program of my own where I teach freelancers everything I've learned. Can I ask, like, you talked about affiliate money. What did it look like when you started launching and put it coming out with these educational videos that people could buy kind of on subscription or on demand? Dude, I just gave it away for free on YouTube. <laughs> Wait, you gave Wedding Film School away? For free? The Just the videos on YouTube were all free. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I went to conferences that I paid for tickets to attend with panels and stuff. And mm -hmm. maybe once in a while, I did like one-on-one -on -one consulting with wedding filmmakers. Um, but I just, I always felt that that just wasn't the way I wanted to go. Like, I get it. Like, I've had people tell me like, why aren't you making courses and stuff? But mm -hmm. I don't know, everyone learns in their own way. And I feel like everyone teaches in their own way. And I just didn't, I just wanted as many people to see it as possible, I guess. But if you're trying to make money, that's not smart. <laughs> I think that's cool because it's a huge part of your journey. It reminds me of uh, Mac Miller mm. when he would come out with mixtapes mm. on like Dat Piff and like <laughs> World Star Hip Hop. They were free, free mixtapes. It's like free, free stuff. Free and guess what? When he started content. going on tour, they were packed because it was the first time he was starting to offer something that was paid. So it's cool because it shows how real and authentic you are. And I appreciate that you're not a gatekeeper. Because um, I'm sure there's so many people that you've been able to influence and impact just by being an open book. Yeah. And that is a driving force because in my own journey, there have been moments that I remember that person worked out, posted that and inspired me to start doing it. This person shared how they eat and that made me want to make a change. So yeah, I've gotten plenty of messages that keep me going when they say that my work has inspired them to start hiking or shoot or be a minimalist and like start thinking about finances or, you know, all that stuff. So it's all good. That's awesome. So after the wedding chapter there, I feel like the next is kind of like minimalist minimalism. Mm. I feel like that was like a big part, like, because after the, the whole wedding channel, you started, you started posting more on your regular, just like Craig Adams YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm more like, selfishly interested in this question because I'm trying to do YouTube, but I feel like you were trying a lot of different things out in the early phases of the channel. Like you were kind of vlogging a little bit, you were making a couple like film, short films. Like how did you find, was that, was that all stuff you now, you don't regret? Like that was all learning curve of getting started. Cause with YouTube, it's very, it's not easier said than done. Some people are like, oh, I have an idea. I'm gonna start a channel and then boom, it just hit the ground running. It just never works out that way. Mm -hmm. Um, what did that look like for you when you're trying to build out more of the Craig Adams YouTube channel? Coming out of weddings, if I just started doing whatever I wanted, I would have failed for sure. So minimalism was the bridge to get to where I wanted to be. 
Mm. because I wanted to make Casey Neistat vlogs. I wanted to travel and make like Sam Colder videos and cinematic <laughs> stuff. Um, but going cold turkey from weddings, that was a source of income that was, you know, gone. So minimalism helped clean up my finances and set priorities and live a simpler life uh, so that the smaller amount of money I was making with what I truly wanted to make, like vlogs and travel stuff, uh, could make ends meet. And uh, yeah, minimalism definitely helped in that transition period to just taking command of what I actually wanted to be doing, which wasn't weddings. Yeah, yeah. How did you clean up your finances like what did you mean what do you mean by that like did you because you obviously wanted to pursue more of your interest you need to take a financial like pay cut yeah were you just like downsizing were you like how, how did you navigate that yeah actually taking a look at budget doing accounting um fun stuff uh <laughs> um yeah just making a plan instead of just going on autopilot you know and uh making goal-oriented moves i guess um yeah, minimalist. Like I got rid of everything, dude. I was living out of a backpack. Wow. <laughs> and I was traveling to make videos and everything was in that direction, you know? That's uh, all I'm thinking is clickbait, six figure wedding photographer to living out of a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sponsored by Peak Design. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's crazy because I, I mean, I, I've shot a good amount of weddings when I was doing that and the sheer amount of gear that you have to own to like feel comfortable shooting a wedding, like multiple cameras, bunch of tripods, bunch of grip gear, crazy memory cards, all this kind of stuff. So it's like you went from all that to being like capsule backpack kit, mm -hmm. which is like kind of hard for me to think about because I'm a gearhead. So like for me, it's like we have this podcast that imagine like we had, well, imagine if we tried to only shoot a podcast with like what we could fit in one backpack. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like kind of that. It's like almost impossible. It would feel almost impossible to do that. And also making money by just talking about gear constantly yeah. and selling it, you know, with affiliate yeah. links. It was kind of getting old and I felt like I wanted to be a little bit more authentic and, and real in that sense, yeah. you know. Have you dealt with, um, during that transition time, because you like, your audience knew you so much at that time as like the wedding guy. The new channel helped. Yeah, like, w did you deal with, like, comparison or imposter syndrome at all at that point? Like, trying to break out of that narrative that you have crafted for yourself during, like, a couple years during the wedding stuff? Yeah, I I started make like, the new, like I said, the new channel helped. A lot of audience came from the weddings film school channel to the new audience. And there was still overlap with, like, the filmmaking aspect. So it wasn't a complete change. Um I, as far as feeling like an imposter, I was just doing more so like what I truly wanted to do. So it was great. I didn't <laughs> feel weird. I got to give you props because I think I've had a lot of conversations with very successful people in the industry that are shooting weddings and it doesn't fuel them creatively anymore. And they know that they would be way more, they'd feel way more creative flow if you will if they pursued maybe shooting fashion or shooting editorial or shooting adventure content mm -hmm. super hard for them to get from you know sh having that comfortability to giving that up for something that really right away i'm sure you're like oh crap like <laughs> things are different financially i need to you know figure out how to get back to where i was because they almost see that as the new benchmark i am so curious like was there a point where you're like, if I, if I run in this lane long enough, I know that I'll be able to achieve that because I'm doing something that actually fuels me creatively versus doing something that just comes with like a fat paycheck? Yeah. I definitely shifted more towards doing what I wanted to do um, because I felt like I was slipping in the wrong direction. Like mm -hmm. if I continued with weddings, I would have hired, I would have gotten a space. I would have like entrenched myself in that. And then it would have been even harder to get out. So um, I saw like the ejection <laughs> was possible at this moment. Um, what did your clients look like when you made that move? Cause you went from working with brides and grooms to working with who? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Peak design though. <laughs> um, yeah, the brand stuff was tiny 
at that point, you know, it was, that's why I needed to do live lean, uh, because Squarespace pays you a thousand dollars for a video at that point, <laughs> which is honestly, <laughs> this is not that's bad. a lot at that time yeah. because the rates they've been giving these days are atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so the clients, I was still doing a little bit of like freelance stuff. I've done everything under the sun. It's weird reflecting. Like a lot has changed. Um, like were you working with kind of a, a range of kind of a jack of all trades working with any type of brands that were willing to pay you kind of thing? Yeah. Camera department type stuff. Okay. Um, it's hard to remember. Like I was doing like freelance stuff for like California pizza kitchen and totally. just, New York City's wild. Like I remember going on Craigslist and finding jobs. <laughs> I don't even know if it exists anymore. I think there's a lot of spam on Craigslist. Yeah. Um, it's, I ask because that transition is difficult for people. You go from speaking to this consumer or customer, if you will, that's entirely different than a decision maker at a brand. And depending on the size of the brand, there's multiple decision makers. You're having to pitch, propose, treatments, all the things. And um, man, it's cool to it's cool to hear that like you were on Craigslist looking for jobs. You were doing to do whatever it took to kind of make it. Because now would you say you've refined your niche a little bit and like the type of projects that you're a part of and the type of spaces that you're in? Yeah, I am very, I'm, this is a very different space right now compared to that. <laughs> like I don't even, I just hang out all day and then I go on a trip and hike and shoot it. Like what, a, what is that? What, what does it even look like from your perspective? Like, I, um, I don't even know. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good segue into like, <laughs> like your current, like what you're working on. But I, I personally don't know. Like if I looked at Craig's channel right now, I'd, I'd honestly be like, how does this guy, like I would, if I didn't know who he was and I yeah. didn't follow him from like the wedding film school side, I would literally think like, oh, this dude is like some millionaire, like sold a startup or something. And he's able to just like travel now and document his solo hikes mm -hmm. because he just has so much money in the bank that he just could disposable income that he could just like yeah. do this. But I mean, obviously I know that's not how it went, but. It's expensive to travel in yeah, general. It is. And hiking was the cheapest way to do that. <laughs> like yeah. you can stay in a city and ho and pay Airbnbs or hotels and like pay all that. Or you could get out into nature and the farmland and living out of a backpack and hiking for five days is mm -hmm. probably the cheapest way to travel. So that was a way to solve that problem, to make content, make money, but also live cheaply. Yeah, no, definitely. And I also think um, there was a measure of, like, would you say this like hiking transition that you went through too was like, a bit of like finding yourself mm. a bit like but dude like <laughs> went through I, a huge breakup yeah i was in a weird space minimalism helped solve so many problems with mental health and like finding my purpose and wow trying to think about what i actually want to talk about rather than just following money or what people tell me you know? wow mm -hmm. yeah dude that's amazing i felt out of control and yeah. minimalism helped me regain some kind of control and feel put myself in really tough situations that allowed me to suffer in a way you know like hiking 100 miles in the hot sun is kind of suffering mm -hmm. but if i can get through that and sleep in the rain and you know get dirty but not feel weird about it and and just get through that it makes me feel a lot more powerful you know that's cool yeah i feel like the brand side too when you're transitioning uh, like you said, you said you did jobs for like CPK and like all these things. And I, I really respect that you mentioned that because from the outside looking in, it just looks like a, like Paul was saying off the mic, like it seemed like a seamless transition, like a, no, like, I, dude, I got half paid in CPK, uh, gift cards. So I was, oh I was, my gosh, I ate at the same CPK <laughs> in Manhattan so much that the manager like came over and is like, what's going on where did you get this <laughs> who who gave you all of these credits wait cpk paid you in <laughs> gift cards weird weird transition of my life dude. wow yo that's crazy they got that marketing uh right off visa gift card vibes dude, see but that's the stuff that people don't see on social yeah like even your journey mm -hmm. or even mine like we don't post about like the side hustles we had when we were first getting up like all we post on social is like these glamorous highlight it was like our best client work our most epic travel right like 
right now we're documenting mid convo as a trip right like oh cool we're like in brooklyn doing all this thing with the squad but like when i was first starting the podcast i was like in my dinky parents desk like starting the podcast like it wasn't sexy it wasn't cool mm. i wasn't traveling so but i didn't share too much about that journey and i'm kind of sad i did it because i look back on it now i'm like documentation of all that would have been so like awesome and i feel like that's what's cool about craig is like he kind of documented a good portion of like the struggles he went through and and then also like the minimalism and then hiking and so i i admire that about you um is there is there something that you can share on the mic that you really took away from if there, you can think of like one sentence of transitioning into this like hiking era that you're in and you would want to give advice to someone who's like just feeling like they're out of control like they're just like they're not in control of their own career their own life they're just like feeling brain fog all the time like now that you've went through that is there something that you can share on how yeah just cut out the consumption just stop looking at what other people are doing just stop consuming like you got to get your inspiration from a different place wow i love that where do you find your inspiration from for you personally <laughs> currently dude it just seeps into your life i don't know i Social media can be tough sometimes. <laughs> you got to mute some people. Um, my inspiration, dude, I, I watch movies. I watch, I listen to music, mm -hmm. play games, go for walks. My dog is a big inspiration. She, yeah. she walks so much. <laughs> Professional You're hiker. feeling lazy. Yeah. Just look at your dog. I want to pivot real quick. Uh, let's talk about spec work for a second. Because I feel like in my mind, you have this portfolio that was just killer with wedding work. And then you shifted to minimalism, traveling, even though you probably traveled when you did weddings, started putting out more content that speaks to that niche. Mm -hmm. Did you ever find yourself kind of betting on yourself where you took your own money, went on a trip just to create content because you enjoyed it and that turned into paying work or some sort of financial return? Because I think, uh, there's a lot of creatives out there that are just sitting, waiting for a handout. And one thing that I like to speak on um, on the podcast is get out and do some spec work. And if it's something that fuels you and it aligns with where you want to go, then that work could be used to attract new business. Yeah. Every trip that I brought a camera with, I would create some kind of video. And I guess I could call that spec work, mm -hmm. um, but it was genuinely fun and something I wanted to do. I guess spec work could be fun, mm -hmm. but I typically see it as like something you don't really want to do, but you do because it'll bring you value maybe down the road, not right now. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the hiking trips, like going to Hornstrandir, Iceland was a spec trip. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, like on your own dime and everything. Dude, like my microphone broke, so I'm like, okay, ugh, I got to shoot this whole hiking video with no sound. Like, I'm just going to make it ambient, no talking, like kind of zen. Bonnie Bear vibes. That blew Wait, up. Wait, so blew that up. was an accident? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that's wild. I mean, I loved primitive tech and there was like some part of me that wanted to be like uh, low, not lo-fi, but more ambient. How people yeah. doing things with yeah. locked shots. It's like a genre. Wow. I don't know what you call that, but. That's cool. I was like that, but hiking would be cool. But then the microphone broke. I'm like, well, this is the time I'm going to try it. <laughs> wow. My guy needs to team up with Fred again. <laughs> like he's, he's crushing right now with that type of stuff. Um, so that's spec work. I want to go back for a second. I love talking about pricing. We love talking about money. We had a guest on in LA, Puno. She came in hot talking about money and we're like, dang. Yeah. Um, how do you make money right now? Because <laughs> you talked about your first kind of wow moment with affiliates with amazon i think mm -hmm. that's a great way to diversify your income but like in this moment off the mic you're like i don't really work with brands like how and do you, like, you don't make do, money don't how do, do you travel work, yeah yeah um the brand deals have become more lucrative and the adsense money and the amazon affiliate money has kind of just become background like just money that comes in every month and I don't worry about it. I don't look at it. Um, but at this point, I just try to make sure that I have at least like one video per month that's paying. 
And the silent hiking videos, like go on a trip, shoot a video, do an ad within that video has been working this year. You know, that's, it's always been evolving, but um, the money's been pretty consistent with that. So as long as I get paid uh, at least once a month from those, that typically makes me feel okay. That's awesome. Um, I have a question with that, with the money part. It's okay if you don't want to answer, but are you making more money or less money from when you were doing like full blown wedding business? Like, oh, I'm making more money than I've ever made. Wow. That's crazy. See, like you would think that there's a period where you were like transitioning out. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, like, I feel like you, you maybe accepted like, oh, this is going to be like, maybe I'm not going to see as much money, but it actually turned to be the opposite. And you're making more money than you ever did. And I do nothing all day. <laughs> Um, there, there was potential though with the wedding film school. Like if I really treated it as a business and, and did what I know now, that would have been crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You could have really grown it into like this whole. Over a million dollars for sure. But you wouldn't have been happy though if you did that. Would have been a lot of work. I don't feel like I really work that much right now, which is where I want to be. Yeah. I just hang out. (laughs) Yeah. That's amazing. Cause I'm sure back when you were in the thick of weddings, Someone would have told you, hey, just want to let you know, in this many years, you're going to be in a position where you're making way more and you're not working as hard. Yeah. You'd be like, you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, you'd be like, get out of here. And also you got to yeah. travel and that's something you enjoy. And hike. In yeah. that. I'm very fortunate. Um, there will be new eras. Wow. Yeah. When I have a kid, something's going to change, I'm sure. I'm going to have to hustle more just to start making more money. But right now, I've, I'm pretty happy with the flow. Yeah. That's awesome. And you share a few things that there was definitely some point because it seems like this beautiful effortless thing where now Craig's not working as much. Were there any points where you're like, damn, did I make a bad decision? Or were you always like, no, this is great. Like I got this. I make a lot of bad decisions. (laughs) I deleted my Instagram like three years ago. Wow. (laughs) And then my friend grabbed the handle without me knowing because he was like, you're an idiot. And, kept and it then gone. I think two months later, I'm like, I regret that. I like want it back, but it's gone. And he's like, dude, I got you. <laughs> dude, that's wow, cool. Did he, did he tell you that Chris he grabbed it? No, no. Oh, what a homie. So he, he surprised me. He, like he could have, he gave it to hey, me. If you delete your Instagram, Paul, I'll, I'll grab Paul <laughs> Wheaton's for you. Bro. I'll, I'll make sure I'll, I'll keep it safe just in case you go off yeah. the rails. Uh, low key, your domain expired. I bought it from GoDaddy. Shut I got up, you. dude. Shut up. <laughs> But I've, I've deleted media platforms like Instagram, YouTube a bunch of times, and that's usually a stupid thing. But I'm very, like, I struggle having a place where people could expect to hear from me, but I'm not paying attention to it. So I think that's like a bad look for me. Um, so more so than other creators, like, I don't want to have a Twitter if I'm not, like, tweeting. Mm. Like, I don't want to have blank if I'm not using it. Wow. I, I just, like, there is a pressure to, to show up like even even when like just i mean i'm not like a massive youtuber but even the videos i i make that like did well and there's comments on it like i have this like like this pressure to like comment back to everyone and and i hate that that fades hopefully okay hopefully (laughs) because like it it happens and sometimes these questions that people ask they're like lengthy they're like long like they took time out of their day to type this paragraph out and i'm like I don't really want to like answer this, but then I, I feel like it's a bad representation of me if I don't respond to someone who took time out of their day and they see that the creator didn't comment back. You're it's, too nice. I don't know. There's just different eras, man. Yeah. Dude, like a coffee shop that doesn't exist anymore two blocks away from here. I remember going there, getting an Americano and sitting for an hour and just responding to DMs, emails, messages. And I was like, this is crazy that it's my job. It's so cool. I can just like sit here and I'm making money doing this. Yeah. But now, yeah, I I don't really look at comments too much. All right, so if someone wants to roll into Craig's DMs and capture his attention to maybe ask some, like, pick your brain, if you will, mm. what can they do to stand out? Or just, hey, don't message me. <laughs> I like Instagram DMs because they save everything. Wow. You know, I may not accept the message request or answer, or maybe I just give a heart, but like, I see the history, oh, you know, so cool. if someone's been a fan for a while, it's pretty easy to see. Um, that's true. I don't know. I just, 
a lot of times I just have to be in the mood. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's, that's what I try to remember. Cause like it's above and beyond. Like I've reached out to other creators or people and it's hard to know where their head is. Like what would make them want to respond? What would make them want to mm -hmm. work with you or do anything? Mm -hmm. yeah. How that's do I good. become friends with Emma Chamberlain? Like what, yeah. how, what no, does that even good. look like? <laughs> low, low key, I could see the, I feel like you guys would be good friends. Like I, I listened to Emma's podcast too. And like even the way you have been on this podcast and the way you run yours, I feel like you guys would chop it up in a, in a way that like feels very engaging to watch. Yeah, hopefully in the future. Yeah. Um, one thing that I wanted to ask was, <laughs> it's crazy because I was telling you how Craig has this video that like got millions of views yeah. on the hiking one. And you're saying that's the one that your mic broke. Yeah. And that's why you did like the silent hiking yeah. audible. Did you use that? Like when that happened, I'm sure it was like a little bit of a shocker, like and it kind of just like blew up. Did you use that as like a launching pad? Was that strategic? Or were you kind of just like, oh, cool, but I still like hiking. I'm just going to do this. Was that calculated or you're like, because now obviously you're doing like a very similar, uh, like kind of doing more videos like that. Yeah. In hindsight, I accidentally did what you should do to get attention in the algorithm. It's a great thumbnail, great, great title. Um, <clears throat> it's a genre that was kind of new. This ambient lock tripod, people doing things, uh, no talking kind of video, huge now. Like the Massive. overland Jeeps, the mm -hmm. overnight winter backpacking campfires, the build a house silent thing, like <laughs> people gardening, like, you know, it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, but I had made one or two videos about hiking and traveling before that. So I was going to continue hiking just because it was my passion, my interest. Uh, but when that blew up, I was like, okay, the next one has to be good. <laughs> wow, that's good. So I hiked 120 miles on the Tour de Mont Blanc in Switzerland. Like the best hike, like one of the most famous hikes, great weather, knocked it, like I shot for six days uploaded that and i think that was like people were like okay this, this is, is gonna be let's dang, subscribe Craig, your and calves were goes. busting on that trip <laughs> <laughs> that's insane dude not me not me and johnny complaining about the 1.6 mile walk the other day oh no all right can i just say uh when you're going to the airport do you have the big backpack <laughs> um yeah i'm i'm a back there yeah <laughs> i don't i don't back. roll i carry nice yeah Cause I uh, wait, I don't roll. I carry. That's a T-shirt. <laughs> that's merch. That's fire. That's merch right there. I'm not gonna lie. If I saw just coming from Minnesota, uh, there's not many people coming to Minnesota with the big backpacks. Yeah, like a hiking. Once they started getting gigs where I was traveling, and you know, Atlanta Airport, LAX, I'd see people with the big backpacks going international. I'd always be like, I wonder what they do for them. <laughs> I'd be like, I wonder if they're like no offense homeless like if they're making it and uh it's just so cool that it's a part of your lifestyle and it's kind of been a part of your lifestyle for a long time and like you said you kind of just fell into putting out videos that people are now really enjoying um some of my favorite videos to watch just chilling or having on the screen when friends are over are those silent videos <laughs> yeah no it's true it's a huge I, I like to watch some of these like daily vloggers but it's like silent They'll do like the whole waking up, making coffee. And it's like, they're just like, or sometimes I'll put like what they would say audibly, they would just put as a caption, mm -hmm. which is all the satisfying. And I think it's cool. And I was telling Paul this too, like there's a new generation of like YouTubers even where like, I think the slow pace stuff is kind of coming back. Like people are appreciating it just because we're so over stimulated on like TikTok and Instagram, everything's so fast paced that sometimes when I'm at home too, I don't want to watch something. I don't want to watch like a, what's up everyone? Title, 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 transition. I just want to watch like a nice shot. I can't. <laughs> for 10 seconds. It's okay if it hangs for like 10 seconds. Bro, I can't with that. Yeah, so it is a huge genre on YouTube that I think a lot of people resonate with. What's cool that you did in hiking because it's a bit unique and yeah. a lot of work. So it's like, I have a question. Actually, I have a technical question, it's funny. In your videos, you're literally setting up a tripod and then you're like super far away. Are you literally hiking and then hiking back to grab your camera and then walking back so you can continue your hike? Yeah. It's some extra mileage for sure. That is wild. It's like a ten, like a 50 mile right. hike would turn into like a hundred mile hike like that. I've hiked with my brother before and he doesn't do the tripod walk back thing. So we compare mileages and like, yeah, I have, I've got an extra one or two miles for sure. 
And I, and I track my runs on all trail Strava. So if people zoom in on the map, you know, you can see little, yeah, like on the trail. Oh, cool. Like, so you can see every spot where I do a shot, which I tell people, like, if you want to like learn about how many shots That's and crazy. where you can kind of see <laughs> the little pulse. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, it takes, but, yeah. dude, I do it efficiently though. The The second the clip ends is where I turn around. <laughs> I'm not going to walk any extra more. I know exactly where to go for the shot. Wow. That that, that takes like the vlog. You know, people who vlog, you know, they'll, they'll put their camera and like like by a door and then they'll just like walk like a couple feet and grab it and just like build the story that way. Craig takes it to a whole new level. This man's like hiking up a freaking mountain in Switzerland and it's like <laughs> yeah, hundreds of feet away. I think that was a spectacle that people commented a lot at the beginning they're like this guy hiked twice as many miles because he has to go back for the camera for yeah the it shows the effort yeah. it shows the effort that went into it which yep. is wild um so yeah i mean we don't i think this is a good spot to kind of more so close out the podcast but uh i think i would just love to say maybe you can add whatever comments closing comments you want to but i think your story is inspiring because you went through a full-on transition in multiple ways like went from wedding to like own youtuber minimalist hiker you, you you went through different versions of yourself and i think a lot of people if you're listening to this like you could take confidence in knowing that like as long as it interests you and it's something that fulfills you like i feel like it'll work out and as long as you make it your own mm -hmm. would you agree with that or yes you know okay. yeah and in each of these transitions it's a risk you know, it's like mm. you could be making a mistake or you could be making a good move. Mm -hmm. Hedge your bets a little bit. Minimalism helped me hedge the bet when I made some transitions, save money, you know, do it a little smarter. But you got to take risks. <laughs> you yeah. got to do like, what's the point? Otherwise, you know, do what's more fun. That's so good. No, I appreciate you sharing your story with us and sharing your journey. I think, um, yeah, I'm definitely inspired by the fact that you were willing to double down on yourself in that transitional period. And now you're kind of pursuing something that's fulfilling and keep saying it. You're not really working that much, my guy, except for that hike when you have to go back to the camera. <laughs> I like the exercise. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's awesome. Where can uh, people find you online? Yeah, Google Craig Adams, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Um, Threads, bro? Oh, hey, let's go. Threads. <laughs> That's good. What and you even got your own is podcast. happening? Dude, I deleted Twitter because I didn't want to do that. So I'm like, why am I on threads again? Jeez. It's the same thing. Ugh. <laughs> we'll see. And you you got your own podcast. Yeah. And a podcast. Yeah. And I'm going to be doing more Craig News updates, analysis on what worked, what didn't work of current projects and stuff like that. Wow. That's amazing. That's sweet. Well, thanks so much for coming on the pod. And uh, I'm going to go to CPK now. <laughs> Thanks, man. I got a credit card somewhere or a <laughs> gift card somewhere. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. 